Well, praise God. Good evening. This is Pastor Sesum. I'm the senior pastor of Bethesda Revival Center. We are located in the city of Riverside, California, at 16681 Wood Road, 92508. We give God the praise for you, and we thank you for, uh, and we want to welcome you to our weekly Bible study. Amen. Praise God. We've been studying exhaust, exhaustively, amen, or we could use the word, immersing ourselves in the fact that we are, in fact, heirs of God. Praise God. Tonight we're going to deal with the topic of being a joint heir with Jesus. Now, I do uh, acknowledge and realize that we've gone through these this particular lesson once before. We are doing a review. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We are led of the Lord to go through it again because this uh, it's imperative that you and I grasp this revelation, amen, that we can walk, especially in the times in which we live in. It's imperative that you understand who you are in Christ as an heir of God. All right? So, if you have your Bibles, why don't you go ahead and turn to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 4. And then while you're getting Galatians chapter 4, amen, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give God the praise for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for yet another opportunity the, and the privilege to teach your beloved people the word of God specifically as it pertains to them being joint heirs with Jesus now father I ask your anointing upon my life right now hallelujah that father God that I may impart knowledge insight and revelation into these your beloved people I thank you and I believe and I say that they have ears to hear what your spirit is saying unto them now we come against every foe to faith anything that would try to hinder this broadcast or even hinder your people from receiving we bind and we cast them down we claim victory in, in good success in this endeavor and all God's people said Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Now, we're talking about the fact that we are joint heirs with Jesus. Amen. Tonight, we're going to start reading, amen, from verse, amen, oh, Galatians chapter 4. I know you say, he's always reading from there. I'm going to read from Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 through 7 and i'm going to uh read uh from the king james bible now i say that the heir as long as he is a child differeth nothing from a servant though he be lord of all mm -mm -mm. but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of children. 
excuse me, adoption of sons. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the purpose of this study, let's let's recap this. Let's let's re amen define what we're doing here. All right? What's our goal? We endeavor to renew our minds. Amen. That we might see ourselves. Amen. As heirs of God. Amen. And I'm talking about in life, everyday level, not not only when we're in the four uh, within the four walls of the church, not only when we I'm talking about every single day, every minute of the day that we see ourselves as heirs of God. It's going to take our minds being renewed to this word. Thus, that's the reason why we're going over this lesson again. Amen. Because we, we're endeavoring to write this upon your heart. Amen. So we endeavor to renew our minds and see ourselves as heirs of God. Uh, secondly, we endeavor to discover what is in fact included in our inheritance. Praise God. Last but not least, we want to learn how to take our inheritance inheritance. So the goal is when we're done with this series, amen, of lessons, amen, glory to God, we should have some degree of working knowledge. We should have it written in our hearts that we are in fact heirs of God. Praise God. What be beyond a shadow of doubt. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. If you follow along, and you become students of this word, you will see changes in your life, changes in your expectation, changes in your manifestation, because there's going to be a change in your faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God says that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a servant. Some translation says, amen, is no different than a slave. Amen. Glory to God. Though he be servant though he be Lord of all. In other words, it's saying, Lord of God, when we are ignorant, come on, of what's ours, of who we are, of our position in Christ, come on, as a result of being born again and adopted into the family, the royal family of God, hallelujah, glory to God. We, we the, the privileges that afforded us we are unable to partake of. Thus, it behooves you and I, come on, to study, to meditate this word of God so that we can much be mature in our knowledge, come on, our knowledge of what the word of God has, what Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension has afforded you and I. Amen, glory to God. I, 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 it, it, you know, I tell people the moment I was born again, I became an heir. Amen. And the moment you were born again, you became an heir. The problem is we did not know it. We, we, you know, but we're going to know it now. We're going to receive our inheritance. A amen, somebody. So now let's redefine uh, what's an heir. Let's, let's do this again. An heir is one who receives an inheritance by right of birth. Now, what do you mean right of birth, Pastor Cecil? When we were born again, come on. Remember what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So when you get born again, you receive Christ as your Savior. Come on, you confess Jesus as your Lord. Come on, you believed in your heart. You confess with your mouth. You were born again. Amen. You were born again into the royal family. 
as heirs of our father's kingdom. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so an heir is one who receives an inheritance by right of birth. In our case, amen, we've been born again. This has got nothing to do with your natural family. Amen. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. See, when you come to grips that you've been born again into this royal family, come on, and you are an heir, it begins to, sh something shifts. Come on. The, you Things shift. Amen. Glory to God. Let's face it. If we go by, and many of us, not all of us, but if many of us go by what our, our family lineage affords us, we will be limited. That's in the natural, but in the spirit, come on somebody, in the, from the spiritual perspective, from the born again perspective, things shift. Well, now we're no longer subject to that. We're no longer limited to that. We, we now receive what the kingdom of God, amen, affords us. Bless God Almighty. I hope you got that. Let's go to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. I've been going all slow. I'm looking at some of my other notes. I'm sorry. First Peter. Chapter one. I'm going to read from verse one. Okay. And then I'm going to read Amen, verses three and four from uh, two other translations just to, to open it up to us. First Peter, chapter one, verse one. Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, when it says strangers, it's talking about those exiles of the dispersion. Remember in the book of Acts, it says that the church began to be persecuted. Come on, somebody. And as a result of the church's persecution, they spread out. They went to different places. But the glory of that is, you know, by them spreading out, the gospel began to be preached in different places. So Peter is addressing this particular letter. Amen. Glory to God. To the strangers that are in or those exiles that have been dispersed. Now, those uh, a lot of people understand that word disperse uh, as it becomes the I don't want to go in there. They call it diaspora, if you understand what I'm saying. But it means those that came from a, a certain origin, their roots are from a certain continent or a certain place, and they've been spread out to go to different places. They call that the diaspora. Amen. And so what Peter is saying, individuals were dispersed throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Now, those places are mainly uh, found on what we would call Turkey. Come on, Turkey. Or, amen? Okay, then. Uh, that Yeah, Turkey. Uh, all right. And then let me keep going. It, in verse 2, it says, Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Come on, somebody. Peace be multiplied. Amen. Glory to God. When it says elect, let's, let's deal with that. We're studying the Bible. Amen. Even as God chose Israel, a, amen, somebody, even as God chose Israel, amen, he also chose the church as his own people. Now that, 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 <laughs> whew, 
it, it, and so that should speak, begin to speak to your heart concerning this, amen, inheritance, amen, elect, amen. God chose us, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. Then it says grace unto you and peace, nothing missing, nothing broken, shalom, be multiplied. In other words, more than you, you, you can exceeding, amen, that's what it's talking about. Then verse three, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again. In other words, we are born again. Begotten us again unto a lively hope, a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen to an inheritance. See, uh, uh, an heir is one who receives an inheritance by right of birth. To an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. A amen, somebody. Hallelujah, glory to God. What is saying when it's saying reserved in heaven for you? It's not saying that we have to wait until we get to heaven to experience this inheritance. No, God has given, I'm going to go there. God has given you and I the earnest, amen, which is the down payment, which is his spirit, amen, to let us know that glory to God. He is sincere about what he promised. And come on. We so what God is word is showing us is we can participate. We can participate in our inheritance right now. Now I agree that once we get to heaven, and, and the the total culmination of our inheritance, we're going to receive that. But right here on this earth, God expects you and I to walk and live as His sons, as children of God, as heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. Come on. Now I'm going to read it first of uh, verses three and four, first of all, from the amplified classic version of the Bible. It says, praised, praised, honored, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. By his boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope. Come on, an ever-living hope. Come on. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we've been born anew into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay. It is imperishable. It is unsullied and unfading, reserved in heaven, for you, praise God. Now, let's look at the English Standard Version. Let's read that of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's got an exclamation point. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept or secured in heaven for you. So heaven secures this for you. Come on, somebody. Heaven makes sure if that you get it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, we're on, so my first point tonight is we are in fact heirs of God. Now I told you we we're, we're doing a review, so, so, so to a degree we're backing up to go forward. We are heirs of God, but the type, but the subject tonight is we are joint heirs with Christ. So now let's go to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter 8. Praise 
praise the Lord. We give God the praise. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to start reading from verse 12. Romans chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, so when you see the word brethren, lets you know he's talking to the church. Come, all right? Because we're in the same family. We're brethren. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, mortify, you know, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You know, that word mortify is the root word that we use of a person who deals with dead bodies, the mortician. Now, what is that telling us? It's saying we should consider or put to death the deeds of the body. In other words, adopt a new way of living. All right. Don't be led by your flesh, your feelings anymore. Don't be led by your emotions, but be led by faith. Be led by the spirit of the Lord. Be led by the word of God. All right. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not Receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you have received the spirit, here we go, of adoption. We have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are not going to be, but we are when right now. When you got born again, when you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, come on, you are a child of God, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. What's an heir? One who receives an inheritance by right of birth. And I know I do realize that I'm teaching this on a very basic elementary level. I'm doing this intentionally. Come on. Because my endeavor as a pastor is to, if I have to spoon feed this to you, you are going to receive. You will have no excuse for not receiving and walking in your inheritance. You, you, you won't have an, an excuse. All right. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs, come on, joint heirs heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. What does it mean to be that we are joint heirs? What, you know, we, we are joint heirs, but what does it mean? The word joint heir infers, amen, one who is in union with an inheritor. So Jesus inherited, you know, the Father's glory, and we are joint heirs with him, which means we share. We share. We are in union with Jesus. We share the, the glory. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, if my parents left a, a will and a testament, my, me and my brothers, we share it. If Seeing that me and Renee are married, if somebody leaves me a will, me and Renee, we are joint heirs because we're we're united in holy matrimony. Bless God. Hallelujah. See, we both would receive everything because we are one together. We are joint heirs. Come on, somebody. Now, let's look at verse 17 and let's read it through the Amplified Bible. It says this. And if we are his children, it's making this. It's, this is called a, an apologetics to get you to think. It's not saying if, like as if, as if there's a question. What he's doing, he's making the argument. Come on, somebody. And if we are his children, 
then we are his heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. We share his inheritance with him. All right. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share. In other words, when it says share his suffering, it is not telling us to get on the cross. It's telling us we've got to deny our flesh. Come on, somebody. We got to deny our flesh. We got to deny it. If Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Come on, somebody. Huh? Whoever, you, you get what I'm saying? So the suffering is we have to reject. We have to reject the impulses of our flesh to live according to the world. Come on. We're not of the world. Come on, somebody. We are sanctified by the word of God. That's John 17, I believe it's 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We are sanctified. We're set apart. We're made different because we adhere to the word of God. We believe it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. We believe it. Amen. Glory to God. And so we that's the suffering. The suffering is to, 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 to deny the flesh. Amen. Glory to God. The, the, the suffering is to not live after the flesh. The suffering is to mortify the deeds of the body. Come on, all right? Now let's read this from the New Living Translation. Verse 17 of Romans chapter eight. Uh, and since we are his children, we are his heirs. Look what it says. In fact, comma, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Come on. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Uh, you get this? We got to do that. Amen. Let's go to another portion of scripture. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm going to start reading from verse 1, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. In other words, there was a time prior to receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior. There was a time prior to believing and receiving his word, confessing his word, meditating on his word. We walk just like we were, just like the world. Come on. It says, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. In other words, our lives were tethered to Satan's kingdom. Are you catching this? We were we were hopelessly connected, tethered, bound to Satan's kingdom. Okay, so therefore we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What do you mean, the children of disobedience? Those who have not humbled themselves, repented of them, their sins, conf and confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. They're disobedient. They have not repented of their sins. They have not received Jesus. Their They're the children of disobedience, the children of the devil. Um, look at verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation. It's not talking merely about words. It's talking about our lifestyles, the things that moved us, the things that motivated us, the things that, come on somebody, the things that we loved, that we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We couldn't 
think spiritually. We, we were natural thinkers and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. All right. Let's keep it moving. Verse four. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Come on, somebody hath quickened us together with with Christ. He made us alive in Christ. Amen. Then it says, by grace, ye are saved. Verse six, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen, somebody. Now, we are joint heirs with Jesus. Let's read this Ephesians. Let's read verse 6 and 7 from the Amplified Bible. Amen. Verse 6 and 7, Ephesians chapter 2, Amplified. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him. The him is Christ, giving us joint Seat, joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Verse seven, he did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, come on, the limitless, come on, surpassing, come on, riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. Amen. What is the word of God teaching us tonight? It is teaching us that his inheritance in us is immeasurable. His inheritance in us is limitless. His inheritance in us is surpassing anything we can imagine. Amen, glory to God. It's letting us know that where Christ is, we are. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We are joint heirs with Christ. Bless God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God the praise. Amen. As I said, amen. We are, in fact, amen, doing a review. Amen. So, I'm getting ready to cut this off. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, amen. We, the, it goes on to say in verse 8, let me put some music on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus' name. It goes on to say, amen, that for, for by grace ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Come on, somebody. His workmanship. The Greek word for workmanship is poiema. Poiema. Where we get, the, we in the English, we, train, we, we derive the word poem. Amen. Or poetry. Amen. We are his workmanship. Amen. It, it signifies we are God's product. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We're his design, amen, glory to God. It, it, it's emphasizing that God is the master designer, amen. A amen, glory to God. And he has redeemed the believer, amen. And he has made the believer a new creation in Christ, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. See, what you have to understand what God's word is saying is before, uh, amen, we got redeemed, our lives, before we were converted, I'll say, our lives had no rhyme and no reason. A amen, somebody. Like the song we used to sing, without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, I would be drift drifting like a ship without a sail. Our lives had no rhyme or reason. But since we were have been born again, since our lives have been converted amen we've been we come on it brought balance into our life it brought symmetry into our lives it brought order 
we are God's workmanship. The Bible says we've been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Come on. Hallelujah. Good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Father, we give you praise tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, what your word is teaching us or has taught us. Father, I pray for those who, Father God, are viewing via Facebook, those who will view via, amen, YouTube. I pray for Bethesda. I pray for our church. I pray, Father God, hallelujah, for our friends. I pray for those, our relatives, those that, that I pray for those that support our ministry. I bless right now. Father, I pray, Father God, that they catch hold to this truth, Father God, that we are joint heirs with you, that we are joint heirs with Christ, that we are heirs of God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ and everything Christ has. He has your, because we are born into your royal family, because we have received the spirit of adoption, Father God, you didn't shortchange us. You didn't leave us lacking. We thank you, Father God, that everything you you we have right now. I pray that the body of Christ will begin to see, Father God, what's theirs in you. I bless right now our church. Glory to God, from the youngest to the eldest and from the eldest to the youngest. I pray, Father God, for spiritual maturity in our church, oh God. I thank you right now. In the name of that's above every name. The matchless name of Jesus is my prayer. Well, beloved, that's all Pastor Sussum has to share tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Want to remind you, amen, that tomorrow we will be praying via, amen, Zoom teleconference. Amen. Some of you need to, we know you want us to pray for you. Why don't you send in your prayer request nine at 909 709-9433. You can text, amen, your prayer request into that number. That's 909-709-9433. And we will pray for you. Or perhaps you want to join in on our intercessory team. Praise God. Send us your information. Text it to 909-709-9433. And we will send you a link, amen, so when we come on to pray, you can pray right with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, beloved, amen, that's all I have. Remember, Thursday, we will be distributing, picking up food for distribution. We'll see, we, and we come to, and together once again and assemble ourselves, amen, on Sunday at 11 a.m., amen. So this is how we dismiss, amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh, Lord my strength and my redeemer and on behalf of myself pastor sesam and first lady renee sesam we say we love you we miss you and can't wait to see you face to face god bless you be blessed in jesus name